Welcome to Raven's Over. Please go to my channel, also hit the notification bell, like this video, and share. This is my edition of Who Knew. I want to share the story about a transgender woman by the name of Jackie Shane. And in case you don't know about her, she was out here way before most. Sit back and let me tell her your story. Welcome to the Hey! What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? Are you getting it in? Somebody getting it for you? What's going on, people? Subscribe to my channel. Let me introduce you to Jackie Shane. She's American singer now. Jackie Shane was an American soul and rhythm and blues singer who was most prominent in the local music scenes in Toronto, Canada. In the 1960s, she was born May the 15, 1940 in Nashville, Tennessee. She died February 2019 in Nashville, Tennessee. And I want to share this story about her life and living and all the albums and the record labels she has done. So today, I pay homage to you, my sister, Jackie Shane. And I want y'all to listen to the story of her life and living. And please, see the strength in this woman. The story... Of Jackie Shane is the story of one of the greatest unsung singers, soul singers back in 1960. It is the story of an African American transgender woman who had the courage and strength and soulfulness to lead her life in an open and honest manner at the time when doing so extremely risky business. Jackie, Jackie's sexuality was never a secret, but Jackie never played the trans bisect or the drag queen card. She wore makeup, silk skirts, Shirts and jewelry on and on stage, projecting a sense of refined femininity, and did so in a manner excluding class, self-respect, and dignity. Her identity was never an act designed to play an audience sense of erotica. Jackie was always without apologetic, her authentic self. And she was always able to hold the audience in the palm of her hand, mesmerizing them with her radiant eyes and extraordinary voice, vocal abilities to grace, stubble stage presence. Jackie's story is one of the Hollywood screenwriters that couldn't begin to invent kidnapping, carnival side shows and con artists, ministries, professional gambling careers, and a drummer, vocalist, and a dancer fame or Tornado, Montreal, and Boston. The hit single, Solitary Life album, and No Studio albums, a magazine cover, alongside with John Wayne, and a disappearing act of rivals that of uh, a Houdini. Jackie's last appearance on stage took place in Toronto back in December 1971. Within days, she slipped out of the city, and for and attempt to purpose to disappear, to disappear into either for the next 20 plus years rumors profile many suggesting that she had been murdered in California. But in the mid 1990s, Jackie formal band leader Frank gave Jackie's phone number to the researchers at Bill, who was writing an article on Montre, Time, and Canada. Slowly, words began to spread among very small circles in the R&B world that Jackie was still indeed alive. Ellis, by 2006, the number of Monty Motley had given months to no longer good. The people who answered the phone had heard, who never heard of Jackie Shane. Once again, Jackie had vanished and the rumor mill resumed its work as a question of what had become of this soul music legend. Jackie Shane was born back in May 15, 2000, excuse me, Jackie Shane was born back in May 15, 1914 in Nashville. Jackie, Jack Crawford and Jesse Shane, the couple, annulled their marriage less than a year later. And Crawford Ford, for custody of the only child he lost and Jackie's maternal grandparents made sure that Jackie did, did not take um, their father's a surname according to Jackie now. Jack Crawford was a crook, a man he she never really liked. Growing up in North Nashville, her grand 
parents were the beacons of their life. As a young child, her grandfather spent hours up with her, teaching her about Native Americans, nat- nat- nature, nature, and as she put it, the art of work, the art of walking. He was a marvelous creature, Jackie said. I've never loved anyone the way I love my grandpa. Although he was a very powerful, he was very kind. He was like a big mountain. He made you feel good. I used to love being with my grandmama. She says she would be mourning these beautiful Melanie's as she was doing her housework. I would just sit quietly and listen to her. It was almost like a song, but in the morning, the morning, and it would just get heavy. It was like you could see it moving through the house. It was a beautiful thing. It really was. When she was four years old, Jackie, like nothing more than to play dress up. I was dressing up dresses and heels and shoes. I would go to the closet and get the clothes. They wondered how did I trip? How I didn't trip and fall on those high heel shoes because my feet was too small. But I would push my feet all the way into the front and I learned how to walk almost like May West. And I had a way to wrap those clothes around me and pin them. It was very common to see the little Jackie in a dress, hat, purse, and shoes walking up and down the sidewalk. That was me at an early age. Mom would come in into her bedroom and it would be sitting on a vanity, her powder all over my mouth and lipstick and rouge. Mom would crack up. Every night, Jackie would sleep between her grandparents, safe and secure, and the unqualified love. When she, they, when they broke, when they broke, came, the radio would go on, spiritual, filling the air every morning, blues after lunch, when Jackie loved the music of her home life, her first musical awakening happened at six, when a friend broke, brought her into the house, and she was not previously visited. There was people there we called Jackies. I saw tambourines and what was you would see all of a sudden this man came into with a big brass drum and a mallet. First they were they had a prayer and all of a sudden this woman said, I'm a soldier in the army and the Lord and that's where we were going off running. I had never been in anything like that in my whole life. This guy was whipping the drums and my little bottom was bouncing up and down on the streets. I had never, ever experienced anything like that in my whole life. I didn't want to eat, wanted to even end. It was beautiful. One song after another, the tambourines was going, the drums and the clapping. It was just like something I've never seen before. I couldn't get over it. They were so right on, I couldn't stop talking about it. Jackie's mother married an Ohio native, Jess Reed, and relocated back in Ohio, about 20 miles southwest of Cleveland. When Jackie's grandmother died in 1947, Jackie joined them. When Jackie attended church every Sunday when she was eight years old, but people began to notice, take notice of her voice and ask her to join the Del Choir. Now Jackie agreed in the condition. I said that, Mom, I will sing, but I will not listen to the minister, and I'm not giving him my allowance. The sinister mom would laugh. At such a tender age, and the pattern was already set, Jackie Shane would handle her own business. No one was going to take advantage of her, especially when it comes to finance. <laughs> I do like to be played. I don't like to be played, affirmed Jackie. At school, I was the fast runner. Oh, honestly, I was, I'm not bragging. I could just run. I just sort of leaped through the air. It. I did just ask me to run in an inter-school competition. I said, how much does it pay? They said, well, Jackie, this is cool. I said, no, no, no. I don't own this school. If I'm going to perform, I want to be paid. Everybody said, child, you too much. No, I found out early that you cannot be too much in this world. You can't. It is impossible if you don't get your gatherings together. People will take advantage of you. And I told them, what do you mean my school? I'm not getting a nickel. 
No, 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 honey. You got that to give Jackie some money. Oh, and all of this nonsense of patting me on my back and giving me a slice of pizza. I can buy my own slice of pizza. Give me the money. <laughs> By the time she was 10, Jackie was back on Nashville living in her aunt Gussie Martindale Church was still a part of her life and a year later she was baptized in the river in a traditional southern manner. It was a you're gonna in entrance, explains Jackie. In the mid moving things, it was like being hypnotized. You all of a sudden a part of especially when you are baptized in the river, everything almost stopped as if you're crossing over to something else. Not surprisingly, gospel had an inordinary influence. Jackie seen three different gospel groups. Now, it also says that over the years, a couple of years, the first consisted of five boys, plus Jackie, for a while, they had a trainer through they soon ran out of money. The other two groups were made up of all girls, all performed a local church's program, which Jackie more than often that not feature as a lead singer and maintain. In the meantime, she listened to other gospel records like the Carvans and Oh Mary Don't You Weep and was important touch stones, but the Davis sisters were her favorite group in 19... 55, 12 gates of the city being specially influenced. When those girls started to sing, oh my God, it was Ruth Davis delivering all the way she made me feel. Ruth was such a powerful singer as such a soulful woman. Her projection, I've never felt like that in my life. In her junior high school, Jackie joined the Glee Club singing high soprano when a professor when a professor of the Universal heard Frick's Universal heard the um group. She praised Jackie and invited her to the Glee Club and sing at the Fritz Chapel, which that de was decades early had been the home of um, Seminole Fritz Jubilee singers. It was a beautiful day, said Jackie. We sang, we said, we sat down. Servants came. You can imagine what an honor it was for me. We sang at the chapel at the Free Jubilee Singers. Fritz Jubilee Singers. At the age of 11, music also began important, became very important. I did not really come of age in the music as long as time she explained music was not important to me i enjoyed it but understanding it was something i had learned the first artist i've ever felt was nat cole it was a song called too young good lord i could not believe it the velvet voice of his pronunciation and made me feel i could even start singing the songs such as walking my baby back home and pretend she was stuck about seven years later when she heard bb king singing worry 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 oh a jukebox on nashville fame new era club i understood the pain the agony of losing someone you care about it was just really powerful it really hit me by 13 jackie started wearing makeup to school And many of us can understand that. Oof. Amazing woman. She started wearing makeup to school. Confidence it would was she Jackie never cared an eye of what anyone else thought. And this is so amazing when it comes down to living in your truth. It is so important to not care what people think. My mom was very intelligent. She said, I will want you to look how people come into your world. She said, then I want you to look at yourself. You have nothing to cry about or be ashamed about anything. You're magnificent. Most people are ignorant about the world that they don't get it. It's me, stress Jackie. That's what it is. I was born a woman in the bliss body. That's how it always been. 
I'm not putting an act on. I could not be anyone else if I tried to. I would be most ridiculous thing in the world for me to just try to be a male. Confident. Confident. In who she was. Listen to that. Confident in who she was. From the point on, Jackie never cared. And I, wit or anyone else's thought, I don't think of myself as anything but another person. What I'm doing, there's nothing wrong with it. The way others think doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not hurting anyone. For the first time, Jackie flirted with the ideal of allowing the footsteps of friend becoming a professional gamer was a very lubricant, she laughed, because they would underestimate me because I was younger. But her friends ended up killing two people, and Jackie decided to leave the gambling thing alone. Go for her. Another means that the making of money presented itself soon after I was walking one night and I heard a minister ministering to people. He started to sing and drew music from me to me. There was just a few people inside of there. I sat in the back and I was listening to him and that was dramatic. The chairs were metal. I started to play with my hands on the one hand of the chair. I could not resist. I got louder and the people started to respond to it. When the service was over, I stayed. The next thing I knew, I was working for him, singing, playing on the chairs. The people would come to hear the child play on the chairs. The minister had questioned was one Reverend Tucker. He was a con artist. He was selling numbers. He was healing. He you talking. He was healing you talking about being fascinated and being educated about life. I couldn't wait to come to get there. We would go out on the gospel truck from the neighborhood and neighborhood. We would just stop in the truck and he would sell them as goodies. You talking fun? It was most fascinating experience. I wasn't like the other children. I was very advanced. There was people who was afraid of me because I was so young but knowledgeable. I was learning how people could take advantage of other people by using their weakness. We had five and dime back then. We would go and buy candles, toiletry waters, and oils and stuff, and we would pass it off as being holy water. There was a fascinating experience and sit there every night, and one day, I love every moment of it. I was fascinated watching people dose in my age, but not rain. Jackie was still a teenager when she her career began and Ernest. About two miles from her home was a variety store. The woman who owned this shop would regularly bake Jackie's favorite homemade oatmeal cookies. I went there to buy some oatmeal cookies, Jackie remember, and I heard the blue piano begin play. It was low. It was a little neighborhood mom and pop store, and they lived in the back. The son of playing the blues, the blues and the blue piano, I couldn't tear, I couldn't tear away from him. The guy was whipping the piano like I had never experienced. He had a thing I just sort of eased in there and said, "Do you mind if I listen?" He said, "No, have a seat." As she was playing, I moved closer and started to drum on the chair. He said, how long have you been playing the drums? I said, I haven't. He said, how can you tell? How can you play the drums? I met a guy that just came to Nashville. He's a guitarist. And we spoke in a club over the weekend. If you could get a drum, a set of drums, we could put it together. I went the next day and got Simpson's set of drums. I called him and that was my first trio. We just took off out like a house on fire. 
the piano, Lewis, the guitarist, was less. Within a few weeks, the trio had a gig playing in two hours every Saturday RB station, WBOL, and were booked to play Nashville Fairgrounds with Jackie playing drums, standing up and singing the same time. Shortly after Jackie turned 15 years old, Little Richie stormed the charts with his first specialty single, To The Furry. When he came through Nashville, singers like David Bryant introduced Jackie to Richard. Jackie adored the original version of Richard group, The Upsetters. There was only been one group who could play that nonsense like little Richie would play and that was the upsetters oh my lord I wish had them have mercy I would have probably have been in, in any oxygen tank Jackie spent time comparing notes on the upsetters drummers and oh great Chuck Chuck Charles Chuck Connors hanging out in the upstairs Setters rehearsal and up on the Jackie got behind the drums. I started to play. She recalls, I stopped and Connor said, Do it again. The next thing I knew, he was the pattern of Jackie play, a sipping and sliding and rip it up. The next time Lavelle Monday and Shane found themselves in the studio recording for the Ernie Young Excello Records. One day, we created a pattern that was never been heard. Morgan Babs, who was the great preacher and a gospel singer, where he came in, I think Lewis knew him, and he asked him to come and hear us. We played our creation for him, and he took out his pad and pen and started putting lyrics to it. But he also told us, you can't tell anyone I'm involved because, after all, this is a Reverend Babs writing specific lyrics. The song they were working was eventually titled, I Miss You So. Credit solely to Babs on the 45. Ari Young cut it with 20-year-old Lillian off, who had approached him hoping to record gospel for the Nash Barrow label. Now, with Monday providing a slightly out-of-tune guitar lick and a hot solo, Shane laying down on a fetuous, a bit cymbal pattern of drums, and Lavelle comparing with the groove of the piano. The 45 was released on Excello, A Storm in the Way to number 8 on R&B charts and number 66 on the pop chart on the Sunday of 1957. While I Miss You So, While I Miss You So, was making his way up to the shore. Jackie mother mourned through, moved through environment of Los Angeles. Jackie came to visit the summer and the mother wasted no time convincing her to enter into the talent show run by Johnny Altus. Although Jackie can't recall the name of the venue, it may have been the Harlem spot hot spot in San Puerto Rico, Pedro, San Pedro, where Otis regularly hosted talent shows. I think my mother just wanted to see how the people would react to me, says Jackie. I was the third contestant, and they would let me off. I sang Little Richard, Lucille, oh yeah, I did. The audience was carrying on, yelling and carrying and crying, more, more, more. The only way the mic, John is Otis, could stop them is that he said there are other 20 some other contestants and after they have done then things maybe then think maybe Jackie can sing later I won the first trophy I was surprised I didn't know the audience was going to behave like that but back in Nashville after the Los Angeles 
um, Jackie quickly began a regular part on the cello Nashville studio band uh, playing alongside of guitarist Johnny Jones, pianist Skippy, bass player Clifford Trombone, Marvin Jackson, and saxophone Johnny Beck. She also began the drummer in the house band of Nashville premiere back at nightclubs back in Soul Bridge, the new era. So I just want to give y'all an idea of her storyline and the things that she's gone through. Just a backstory. Jackie Shane, a transgender pioneer, 1960, soul music dies at 78 years old. Jackie Shane was a black transgender soul singer who packed nightclubs back in 1960. Tornado, tornado before stepping out of the spotlight for decades, only reemerged with a Grammy nominated record in her 70s, has died at 78 years old. Her death was confirmed by Douglas, her producer and friend. He said her body was found at her home in Nashville on Thursday. He said he did not know when she had died or the cause. Almost five decades passed between Miss Shane's 1960 career in Canada and her 2018 Grammy nomination, the best historical album for any other way. The record introduced her to the new generations of fans and today her face is a part of a towering memoir of the downtown tornado. I do believe that it's like destiny Miss Shane told Canadian Broadcasting Corporation this month. I really feel that I have made a place for myself with wonderful people. What I said, what I've done, what they said, they make lives better. Jackie Shane was born in Nashville back in May 15, 1940, and grew up a black transgender woman in the, drink, the Jim Crow South but she made her name after she moved to her tornado back in 1959, becoming a force in the music scene and back in packing nightclubs. She scored a number two spot on Canadian singles chart back in 1963 with her silky cover, Williams Bell, Another Way. The song about putting on a brave face and a friend of ex-girlfriend, but Miss Jackie gave it a subversial twist when she sang, tell her I'm happy, tell her that I'm gay. Miss Shane was identified as a female from the age of 13, but throughout the 1960s career, she publicly referred as a man. Speaking to she said, sometimes describe herself to appears as gay. It was just being me. She said, I never tried to explain myself to anyone. They never explained themselves to me. As a child, she said, they unabashed femininity, unwaving self-confidence, turned heads back in 2017. She said about the grade school bullying, like unwise threw a stone at her. The rock hit her and the bullying faith her Sell. She wanted to tor they she, he wanted to torment me. I will never allow that. Miss Shane said that she picked up a jump rope and whipped the boy with when the teacher tried to separate them, the teacher she said that the teacher too. She she ended up hitting the teacher too. Jackie Toad said that she moved to Canada after witnessing a group of white men attacking a black man in Nashville. One cannot choose where one is born, she said. But you can't choose your home. And Canada Machine mingled in the music royalty, sharing the stage with Etta James, Jackie Smith, and Impressions. Impressions. And other stars, 
but in 1971, she abruptly fell it behind. In the following decades, she became a cult heroine legend online with fans suspiciously about where she had gone. The answer turned out Los Angeles. She told back in 2017 that she had left Tornado to be with her mother, Jessie, who lived alone after the death of Miss Shane's stepfather died back in 1963. Miss Shane may have been a star in Canada, but it didn't feel right to her. She said that her mother was living by herself so far away. She went to live with her back in Los Angeles and they moved back to Nashville where her mother died in 1997. Mr. McGrone said on Thursday that Shane, no immediately survivors. After her mother died, Miss Shane lived a private life. She watched old movies and network dramas, ordered takeout and ventured outside. Only every once in a while, she did. She wore a hat, dark glasses, least she be recognized. Miss Shane watched a history march from the covert comfort. She watched from the comfort of relatives in her interviews. She shared through the legalization of same-sex marriages. She was here. She had to fight for everything that should have already been on the table. And she shook her head at the stage of pop music. I'm going to have to school these people once again. One thing Miss Shane did not do during her decade of Canadian stardom was record a studio album that changed back in 2017. When a Chicago-based label, Numero Group, released her eulogy, which was later announced by the Grammy Awards, Miss Shane shared her life with CBC in the month. Most people are planted in someone else's soil, which means they are a copy, carbon copy, she said. I say to them, unroot yourself. Get into your own soil. You may be surprised who you really are. And those words are something that my two-spirit sisters and my two-spirit brothers need to live by. And I will say it again. Most people are planted in someone else's soil. And that's the people that talks about us like a dog. Which means they are a carbon copy of someone else, she said. I say to them, unroot yourself. Get into your own soil. You may be surprised who you really are. So I thank you, my sister, Miss Jackie Shane. Thank you for your strength, not backing down, fighting, knocking down doors, and people may not understand who you are, but as of today, a new audience do. The beautiful woman died at the age of 78 years old. She is definitely a transgender pioneer. I thank you, my sister. I thank you. Anyway, like I said before, y'all let me know how you feel about this video. Comment, share this video where you can. Just a little positivity. And like I said before, who knew? Did you know about her? If you don't, guess what? You know now. Share this video. Be well, be blessed. At the top, there's an Instagram button. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. Let you I love you. And thank you for watching. Kiss the ring.